official controller podcast is now the property of Zudamax Media. Don't forget to like, share, and leave a review wherever you found this show. Zudamax Media is the world's largest streaming service straight out of Mexico. Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. We've done it, Bobby. Episode 75. The hardest, the easiest, and the most obscure. Sounds like a Western title. Uh, uh, like with me, George, as always joined by Bobby. Mario to my cosmic space head. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. You? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Let's welcome fans, new and old. Let's let them know how it's going to go. Coming up, we've got some news. In there, we've got some Sony, Xbox, and Nintendo news this week. So the trifecta, we're missing the small meat prong at the side, which is PC gaming and retro gaming. Forgive us. All right, you'll get your turn in the barrel. The feature <laughs> this week is the Western style. I'm, 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 I'm selling myself a bit too short there. There's going to be no Western... Um, bits in it at all it's the easiest the hardest the most obscure game you've ever played because we want to get to know you as well as you know us then obviously there's a little sniff of listener stingray in the air bobby then the real man the real deal drops a cog shoots up the drive or fifth from broadway or whatever we call it pops the trunk we pick out a vhs and we would go through this week's new releases then at the end of all of it i ask you you handsome little devil, <laughs> what you're hoping to play for that gaming week. But before the show can begin, there's a young man out there in England somewhere driving on the wrong side of the road. Mm-hmm. He's got a Fiesta 1.1 Popular Plus. <laughs> Corona's hit down hard on the Odders family. But it doesn't matter, friend. Grip that wheel tight. Indicate before you move. Get on the right-hand side of the road. As I ask, Bobby, what have you been playing? Okay, so I've been playing Strange Brigade with my boy Marlon. Okay. We should be done with it today. Yeah, We have a, we have a date after the show so to finish it. And then um, my friend recommended me Rogue Company. It's Ooh. a free, to, free download, free game for Xbox and PS, PlayStation, and it's cross-play. So they all have Xbox. I don't. So okay. they told me to download. I downloaded it, and it's like a four on four. It's like it's like four on, but with guns. So, wow. and it's it actually is very fun. And I don't only do P- PvP games, but the trophy list isn't that bad, and it doesn't seem like you have to kill eight million people like you have to do in Call of Duty. It's just play the game, and everything comes naturally. So we played that for like three hours last night. And I told all my friends to download it. So it is free. Like, if it's free game and it's good, do it. It's called so Rogue it Company. Rogue Company, yeah. Yeah. Hmm, I don't know if the person. trailer had, like, um, had the Asian girl with the katana. It had that guy in the gold mask. Oh, that's... That, um, it was... I think I had to pay for it, but now it's free. Right, okay. Well, they but, know how to monetize their games, don't they? 100%, yeah. Anything else that you've been uh, fiddling with? No, that's it. Just I got a group. Uh, I found some people to play uh, Zombie Army Trilogy because I'm going to go on a rebellion run. Just not got all their games at this point. Wow. Okay. Might as well. What you been playing? You little devil. You snuck that in there. I have one mm-hmm. more question for you. Okay. Other than the, does that mean you're going to play all the sniper sniper elite games? Yeah, I got Sniper Three for four bucks. Mm-hmm. Ooh, good sniper four was like 10 yeah and i think i think all the games are on sale again because i saw zombie army trilogy was 40 now it's 10 mm. so if you just look through them on the store there's super discount but the funny thing is like they're not advertised like in the psn store the sales i didn't see them in that under 10 under 20 bucks under 15 bucks section oh yeah i had to actually like search for it which is odd very strange. You figure if it's a sale, just put it in the sale. But I don't know. Maybe the PS, that's the PSN uh, store is kind of sometimes. 
Yeah, well, it's been going through some changes, hasn't it? Some yeah. good, some bad. Seemingly some mm-hmm. people are happy and some people are sad. They've got really wish lists. I can't see that being a thing. There's a conspiracy theory that they don't want people putting stuff in wish list and then using that to check easily where the games are discounted. Well, there's a um, website for that, though. There is. So, PS Deals. PS Deals. There you go. Yeah. All the hot tips from our man. Yeah, and then you just whatever, put whatever game you want there. And you add it to your wish list, and then they'll send you an email or a notification pop up when there's a sale. That's Whether it's uh, a physical or download. Kind of, we don't even need wish list to come back. Yeah, there's a Nintendo Switch one too. Um, hold on one second. Switch deals. While you search for that info, I'll let you know what I've been playing. Been a bit sort of hit by gaming lethargy this week, Bobby. I've been. Uh, struggling and stumbling through GTA 4. That's all I've been playing. And we spoke a little bit off air before the show started about how uh, I've obviously played it before and beaten it. And I think I, I've had a few false starts where I've got at least halfway. So I'm right at the end game now. And the drive, pick up, drive, shoot, chase, shoot, sort of formulaic nature of the GTA. The city's still wonderful. I think it's the best city they've ever done. Um, I think the little touches in there that bring it to life are absolutely breathtaking even to this day. Even to the yeah. point where it captivates me way more than five. I've barely had a go at five, and for me, four is still... Mm-hmm. I often overuse this word seemingly, but four is a masterpiece, mm-hmm. but I am growing very tired of it. So, although this will come in to what you're hoping to play, I've downloaded and installed Witcher 3. Beautiful. Is That's that beautiful. game still worthy of playing? Oh, I mean, 100%. obviously the answer is yes, but yeah. for those that are listening, is that a game that's still worthy of being played in 2020? On the I... eve of the PlayStation 5 launch, on the eve of Cyberpunk 2077, is The yeah. Witcher 3 still worth a playthrough in 2020. 100%. 100%. Does one need to have played Witcher 2 and Witcher? No, which is awesome because I didn't play those because they were only on Xbox. So when this okay. game came out, I was like, eh, I don't want to play it. Maybe I'll, I'll wait for like a remaster, but that's not going to happen. And then my right. friend who played Witcher said, listen, he has uh, amnesia. He has no idea what's going on. Neither do you. So you'll find out the rest of the story as he does. So play it. That was a very clever move, wasn't it? And it was the best thing. Apparently, I think in the second game, he like dies, but then he comes back with no memory of what happened. And then he meets people who he remembers, doesn't remember. So you kind of get the story behind that as well. So I thought it was very well done. Isn't that it's, a, it's an excellent game, bro. And listen, I highly recommend at least to play it on medium. You don't have to play it on hard. But at least medium. Because if you play it on oh, easy, me- medium is my default setting yeah. to any game. If you, I never if play people, on anything like My that. friend played on easy, and you can just kill everything. At least on medium, you have to like study the creatures and understand their weaknesses, and you set up your sword and your potions. And it's like, oh man, you're like they're very intense when you're fighting somebody. When like we're it. done, um, on a different note, when we're done recording, where should we go eat? We'll get Dave travel. around, pick us up. Where's he going to yeah. take us? We'll take go, well, me we... somewhere. Take me somewhere in New York I've never been. For we'll some... just walk. We want to walk. Just, we'll just walk a few blocks up. What favorite. do you fancy, Jimmy? Now, oh man, they make. Uh, I like. I'm in a spot. And I can't remember what I ordered last time. Oh, they make a phenomenal steak. Where? What's this place called? Where are we going to go? It's called Trestle. Trestle. T R. E S T L E Trestle. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a beautiful restaurant. And what you have in steak? Yeah. And then we're gonna get. Actually, what we should do is we'll do the brunch. So we'll do twenty bucks each, unlimited for two hours, and we'll drink. Oh. We'll drink frozen Arnold Palmer's until we can't take no more. Is that a cocktail? Oh, bro, it's amazing. What's in it's that? A, there is a little bit of vodka. I'm sure Arnold Palmer, like half lemonade, half iced tea kind of mix. Yeah. And they do, which I can't figure out what they add in there extra, but there's something in there, man. Could be cocaine because you just can't stop drinking these things. Okay. Okay. 
Well, it's amazing. Wow. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've, me and you have dined out a couple of places. We've had a lot of takeout because of the Rona, but yeah. now, obviously, I'm an Englishman in New York. I like my toast done on one side. You can hear it in my accent when I talk. <laughs> but I, uh, I'm excited by this. Yeah, me too. Uh, the thing same is, sandwich. That's what they have. What's that called? A do a dip sauce. What hollandaise? No, no, mayonnaise? no. Mayonnaise. No. What you get what a steak was... sandwich, and there's like it's French. I can't pronounce it correctly. I always say it wrong. But it's like a little liquidy dip. You dip the the steak sandwich into. It. Oh wow! A uh, do sauce. A uh, do. Maybe our listeners will figure it out, and they'd be like, "Wow, well, you said it wrong every every you know month. You say something wrong." Well, well that's, that's why we want them to message in. We want oh, to yeah. get corrections, don't we, Bobby? One hundred percent. We want people to write in and say, every week at the end of the news, we say, "What have we missed? What have we made a flaming idiots of ourselves with?" Seemingly to this point, seventy-five episodes, we've not made one mistake. How Never. fantastic is that? We Beautiful. are flawless, flawless victory. Beautiful. Yeah, you get a little steak thing with a little truffle parmesan truffle cheese. Uh, French fries and now, Palmer's, bro. unlimited alcoholic beverages. Yeah, for two hours. For two hours. It's an American thing. In the UK, they would not offer that. Let me tell you now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because we would absolutely drink the place dry. Oh, yeah. they. I'm sure, I don't know how they have enough alcohol for us Americans when they do brunch. It's unbelievable, really. There'd be tramps going in, having begged all night to get enough money for the brunch, and they will get absolutely wasted. I used to like drink Friday, Saturday night with the boys. Now I'm like, mm-mm. No. Saturday afternoon. That's you save a buttload of money too. Okay, well we'll walk there, but maybe if we drink English style, we might need to get the. Uh, oh no, we'll have Dave on standby. We'll have Dave on the 100%. speed dial. Yeah, we, we can't walk back after that. Well, this will be much like me taking Roman out for a drink in uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. Mm-hmm. Yellow car! <laughs> Yellow car! Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think with that all done, everything else been true. You're house, Tom's side of the apartment this week. I've been struggling for heating on my side. And as, as summer turns to autumn, which we're now mm-hmm. fully in, I look out the window now of our glass-fronted section here where we record the show hand in hand hugging each other permanently. Um, one wonders how New York could look any more beautiful. The dappled leaves now turning brown. There's a collection of them getting whipped around in the wind at the foot of the street as we look out. That little and back alley? That little back alley. As the, as the coldness sort of seeps into the air and makes you want to pull on a jumper and a scarf and pull that one you love dearest and nearest to you. Get a Go for the blanket. Get under that blanket. Watch a couple yeah. of box sets together. Mm-hmm. Add, add yourself into rotation a pumpkin spice latte, my friend. That's it. Man. I love this weather. Beautiful. Beautiful. But all good things must come to an end, friend. And that's the end of what you've been playing with a little bit of a surprise insertion of our lives here in New York. Do you know what I think it's time for? It's time for the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, <clears throat> I've got a... It's that time of year, Bobby. I've got a frog crept into my throat. <laughs> um, it's nice to see you, I, to see you, I, nice. Sony has posted an 11-minute video detailing everything there is to know about the all-new PlayStation 5 user interface. Taking the form of a state of play presentation, the Japanese giant takes a deep dive into the completely new set of features. Sony's gone very big on putting as much information up front as possible. With a touch of a button, you can cycle through integrated news pieces from your favorite games. Recently captured screenshots on what Sony is dubbing activities. This is a feature we've heard about for months now. Forgive me. Um, And they give you a good indicator of whereabouts you are on a level and how many more minutes it'll take to complete it. You can even check out the objectives you have left to complete Elsewhere, the rumoured in-game tip system is revealed to be a thing, Bobby, a real thing. You can pin hints and guides to your screen to help you out of the most stickiest situations. Then we touch on the Create button, which was demonstrated via photo mode in Destruction All-Stars. You can snap images in real time and send them to friendship groups. 
Back on the home screen, an Explore tab will keep you up to date with all the latest news from Sony. Now, this is available here in the good old USFA, but our friends over the pond, not going to get it for a little while. We love you, Britain. We really do. While the PlayStation Store is now fully integrated into the system, it's no longer a separate app like on PS4. What did you make of the UI reveal? A sneaky state of play covered in active camo just revealed itself in the middle of the week, Bobby. No fanfare, just, hi, I'm here. To be honest, I didn't know about it. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Call yourself a podcast host. That's just why I enjoy the news I can hear, because I also learn with the listener. Well, what do you make of that? Uh, I like it. The activities is a good one for the trophy hunter like you because it tells you really how far you've got to go before you yeah. get that trophy to pop. Yeah, my friend who plays uh, Xbox, they have something similar. So it's nice to know at least where you're at. Where mm. if on PlayStation, if there's no in-game stats, then you're just Blind. You're lost. That's why yeah. I write things down in a little book. You know. One day... Oh, we need screenshots of that book on the stories. I'll, uh, yeah, I can, I can do some of that. I'll send it to you. Wow. The Chronicles, literally. Yeah, my, my father, my, man, if I had my father's book, that'd, that'd be up on like, that'd be awesome. Because he, he made little, uh, he bought like um, old school grid paper. Yeah. And he made little Zelda maps when he was playing Zelda. I mean, they were, they were really horrible, but, you know, he boxed everything to see what he was and the secret doors. What a legend. Yeah, he was. Uh, so what was your friend telling you about this UI? Uh, no, so he said that that's similar to Xbox, which is good. And um, I got a bunch of notifications to watch the video. My friend sent it to me, but I didn't actually play it. The only thing I know that's annoying people is the chat, they change the chat. So let's say I'm playing with my friend Mon, mm-hmm. and now you ha- you're, you're on, so I want to invite you to the chat. I have to stop and get rid of that chat to invite you and him to the chat. Okay? Now mm-hmm. let's say, you know, RGT comes online. Okay, now I have to delete this chat and invite three of you to my chat. Instead of just adding you to the, a, a chat already it's annoying. And then apparently the last 20 seconds of each chat gets recorded. And then you can send it to PlayStation to make sure everyone is not, you know, saying bad things or whatever. I but then know. I saw that they said they weren't recording chats. Well, apparently I just read something that they are. So I don't know if it's true or not, but... Yeah, I need to get that cleared up. Seems a bit strange. Clear. To be and fair... Twitter, if you think they, about that for a moment, are they really going to have the hard disk space to record the last, even if it's 20? And if it's no. just the last 20 seconds, everyone just goes quiet for 20 seconds, surely. Makes yeah. no sense. No, it's ridiculous. Mm. But I guess, yeah, but no, some of the stuff's going to be good, especially if you're stuck. It's like a little, uh, you don't have to leave the game to look at something. Mm. It's pretty interesting. Yes. I. I was quite taken aback by the slickness of it. It did seem to work relatively. It was snappy, which I enjoyed. I quite like the PlayStation 3 menu, I'll admit. I, you know, that XMB me cross media bar I've always had a soft spot for. The PlayStation 4, it's the halfway house between a cross media bar and where PlayStation 5 is going. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. I used to download a uh, fake PS3 wallpaper with already preset spots for the XMB to drop down, so it looked like you had a little background. Oh, really? What, for the yeah. PS4? No, no, for the PS3. You download, like, a PS3 XMB wallpaper. Yeah. And they'll have, you know, so many things for video games, and then uh, they have fake little boxes, so all the icons match up nicely. Kind of like a like a underlay, so it looks like your the boxes move when you move them. Pretty interesting. PS4 you can't do that, because... And you go down the menu, it changes totally. Send me one of those. Yeah, I will. I'll send you when we finish. I have a bunch. Okay. All right. What's this next bit of news, Bobby? What you got? We got switching up a gear. Switching it up a gear. 
Uh, earlier this week, NPD, NPD predicted the Switch would be the best-selling console of the holiday season in the U.S. The device is apparently in high demand, with that with households expected to pick up multiple units in the fourth quarter. Adding to this is the lack of availability inventory of new PlayStation and Xbox systems, which will supposedly leave the Switch as an appealing and available option. If you weren't already convinced, the Switch's success is set to continue. In addition to this, it's now been highlighted that the hybrid system has been the best-selling console hardware in this location for 22 consecutive months straight. This dates all the way back to December 2018, around the time Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was released. It seems this is actually a new record as well. The previous holder was Microsoft's console, Xbox 360, which was the best-selling console console for 21 months, uh, August 2011 to April 2013. APD's industry analyst, analysis, Matt Piscatelia, notes how the Switch is selling at or above levels never seen before in the U.S. To date, the Switch has sold more than 62 million units worldwide back in August. It has surpassed the lifetime sales of the NES. My goodness gracious me. While Xbox and PlayStation are b- busy releasing new consoles, Nintendo's just back there selling them like yep. shelling peas. And you know what? They must be into the profit big time on that hardware now. Selling like Everything that. they do is a profit for them. Who else can release a game? From 30 years ago and still sell it for 60 bucks only nintendo when you already have it for the nes the super nintendo the gamecube and the wii now you bought the same thing for the fifth time for the switch yeah you have a switch though right yep do you still play it i still play it but not as much as eva and now eva convinced her le- her nephew to get a switch to play animal crossing so, they're Animal Crossing up. They're the Animal Crossing game. Wow. Yeah, she has 550 hours into that game. Oof. Yeah. My. Goodness. I'll tell you what. It's like morning routine. Every morning she gets up, has some coffee, goes to a little town. And I watch it. I don't mind it. And she plays it for two hours. And then she might go back on, like, before the store closes, check out. Other night stuff, but she, basically, she only needs a few animals and fish to complete everything. Wow, do you think she'll once she's got everything, she'll just call it or no? Because she likes to upkeep her town, keeps her occupied, I guess. Wow, do you know what? If they released an add on for that, they would crush. Oh, well, every month they add a little something. Like this is Halloween time, so they have all the spooky stuff now. Yeah, so she has all that. Of course. Yeah, she's in the pumpkin patch. Now her nephew got it, so she's going to give him all the stuff that she has doubles of. Oh, boy. It's going down. The only thing I play on there is Breath of the Wild, which I'm almost done. And now that he has the Switch, I convinced him to buy Ultimate Alliance 3. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a game you got to play with a friend. Yeah, I've played it one player yeah. on PSP, and it's a soulless mess. Yeah. Yeah, you need a friend for sure. Okay. Well. Well done, Nintendo. Stealth killing it in the background there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they carry on like that. 62 million units. I think, what's PlayStation up to with the PS4? Like 100 and something? So uh, yeah. They've got a fair way to go, but 62 million is no mean feat. And I think that will continue to sell. Oh, before we continue, so the listeners, the, uh, the Nintendo Switch deals, the website? Oh, yeah. It's called... Dooku Deal. So it's D E K U Deal dot com. But that's where they can go for the discounted Switch yeah. games. There's other languages and stuff, so you probably can find it in your region too. But basically, whatever game you want, you just add it to your list and they notify you. So right now, Ghostbusters is the video game. It's on uh, Newegg for uh, seven forty nine compared to thirty bucks. That is cheap. Yeah, they have uh, Celeste, which was 20 bucks. That's less than brunch at Trestles. Yeah, it is. Like Mario Wii U, Deluxe U, is on sale for um, it's 40 bucks now instead of 60. So it's not a bad site if you like to buy Switch games because they never go on sale hardly. So this is not bad. 
they search everything that sells game and they boom, they put it there. Oh. Yeah. Last bit of news here then, Bobby. On that note, she may be getting on a bit, but she's got the X Factor series. Xbox Series X exclusives could end up on Xbox One via cloud gaming. Xbox boss Phil Spencer recently took part in an in-depth interview with Kotaku. Uh, regarding all that was at Kotaku don't panic don't panic everyone <laughs> regarding all manner of topics including the potential of Xbox Cloud Gaming Project X Cloud coming to consoles in the future Spencer has previously confirmed this feature is in the works but he took one step further with Kotaku telling the outlet that bringing next gen games to the Xbox One could be a way for us to bridge generations tempering expectations literally also reportedly indicated that bringing cloud gaming to console is behind PC and iOS in the priority list but it's not years off, and the team knows how to get it done. Now, we've spoken about this before, and I was always under the illusion, correct me if I'm wrong, that the Xbox One was always going to get Xbox Series X games via xCloud. But seemingly, it's a little bit further out than we initially thought. So mm-hmm. just thought I'd put that out there. Don't want to be um, confusing our Xbox listeners with me reporting one thing. Because, you know, if I say something with confidence, Bobby... You totally believe it. 100%. So, you know, let's get the facts out there and distributed. Um, I see that's a pretty cool feature. Young kid picks up an Xbox One this Christmas. Maybe parents aren't too sure. I'll get him the new one. Well, it's a lot of money, really. We'll get him this. Okay, get him Xbox One. Brilliant. That's awesome. But he can at least look forward to the fact that he can play maybe the Series X games via the cloud computing, if he's got good enough internet and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he can join in with his friends. If he's got Games Pass Ultimate or whatever, you'd imagine that would be part of the envelope pricing deal. Which again, Xbox, very inclusive, very uh, price sensitive as well, of the game's wallet. So fair play. Let's hope that comes. That would unite the cross-generational divide and give people more bang for their book so it's a good buy now yeah. bobby did we miss yeah. anything do we do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed bobby does any has anyone got in touch seemingly have we made any mistakes did we make one last week uh no nobody messaged me so that's good that's good okay i feel All like right. i did a good i feel like I did a good job well if we've missed anything in the show we've made a boo-boo I've mispronounced someone's name. Let's face it, that's mm. got to happen. It's Bobby. I had this dream the other day <laughs> and I woke up with this in my head. Mm-hmm. It's not Boba Loba, it's Boba Loba, almost like Leviosa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how I always read it. I don't even know what it is anymore. Assuming he, I get that wrong every He week. told us what it was Boba Loba. But, um, yeah, we don't remember. Boba Loba, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I like it. Ever immortalized. Well, if everyone else wants to get in contact with us and let us know that we are a two bit, you know, how can those guys be living it up in New York, right, doing a gaming podcast when they are this average? Well, I tell you, Zutamax Media pays the big books. Mm-hmm. How would they get in touch with us and let us know that our paymasters don't deserve to send us any books this week, Bobby? Uh, they could hit us up on Instagram and Twitter at Unofficial Controller Podcast, or they could even do, you know, their favorite thing ever. Email us at yeah. questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. I'm telling you, if you guys listen to the show and you email George, hello, it'll make his day. I think. Huh. Even a hello. Maybe we don't make mistakes. They don't, they don't email us. That's fine. But now... If they're listening, let us know all the things we've got wrong. Let us know all the hey. things we've said that have upset you. You know, there's a place for that. Mm-hmm. Right. It sounds like a Western, but it's not a Western. It's the feature. The hardest, the easiest, the most obscure, Bobby. We've arrived at this point in time. Shall I do the intro and then we'll get into the to the the meat and veg? Yeah. Or do you want to do it? Uh, I, I, I'll do it, I guess. We got the hardest, the easiest, and most obscure. There are some difficult games out there, and there are really good gamers who make it their mission to destroy them. There are easy games, too, where players can just play and enjoy without ever getting their palms sweaty. Then there are games that are so obscure as ducking into a corner and waiting for a tornado to scoop you up and take it to the next level. 
no matter what kind of gamer you are, there's a game out there for you. Whether you want a challenge, a casual encounter, or something only Stingray heard of. <laughs> now let's hear your toughest, easiest, and most obscure game that you, the listeners, ever played. Let's get deep into the mailbag. Bobby, before we uh, pull over this sack, this bulging sack of mail, mm-hmm. what do you say, what would your most, let me, let me throw a curveball at you, friend. Mm-hmm. Let me throw a slider at you from mm-hmm. the mound here. This is uh, baseball talk for those of the uninitiated. What's your most obscure game? I was looking at all the games I had. And I mean, the most current game would probably be Darkwood. It's, uh, it's a horror game, like a 16 bit, uh, bird's eye view kind of type game. Mm-hmm. We have to, uh, you know, gain items, protect your little house before the creatures come at night. You can explore during the day, but at night you have to protect your house. Pretty like Minecraft. Game. Yeah, very similar. Just not at that, you know, that level. You know, it's much smaller. But that's a game recently that no one has ever heard of that I talk about that they should play. Um, I guess for the PlayStation I'm looking at, Maximo, I thought it was popular, but a lot of people that I know never heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. So Maximo is basically a a spinoff from the Ghosts and Goblins. uh, You see, if I look in a PlayStation 2 magazine from that era, Mm-hmm. They advertised the living wheels out of that game, yeah, and the magazines actually scored it quite highly. But yeah. I like you think that Maximo is one of those games that a few people are like. What's that? Yeah, they never like even uh, as popular as Parasite Eve was. Ooh, they only yeah. heard of Parasite Eve too. I'm like, well, where do you think the first one went? Hello. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no starts the game with a two. Nintendo, I guess. I mean, back then, who knows? But Little Samsung is little Samsung is not um I guess that popular people don't know about it for some reason. Yeah. It's just a little basic little platform or nothing. Really I, I think it's it. been immortalized now because of the price it commands. Yeah. But back then, like, you know, who was really playing that? Um, no, and I think that's why it commands the price, because no one played it, no one's really bought it. I mean, no. for me, most obscure game, there's games like folklore on PS3, which I'm sure people have heard of. Mm-hmm. You know, I could go all the way back to the Commodore VIC-20 and pull out something like The Count, which was a cartridge-based text adventure. That's obscure. Mm. Uh, I think our man, Adam the Artist, will... I think he's talked to me about this, but there's a game called Midwinter, uh, which was a 3D open world, believe it or not, on a 16-bit home computer. It was limited. It was an island covered in snow, and you had to go around to unite different villages in an attempt to... I think mm-hmm. usurp some bad guy imperialistic enemy that had taken over the island from memory. You had to recruit like policemen and people like that with different skill sets, like explosives and things like that. And there were different vehicles you could use. In the same vein, there was another game called Hunter. Um, I don't want to steal John A. Island Gaming's Thunder, but he reminded me of a game called Sleepwalker, which we'll get to in his comment. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll tell you the story behind that when we get to it, but... I think if my memory plays, my retro memory doesn't normally let me down, but maybe it will do in this regard. I'm not sure. Even that game you told me, uh, Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunter on the PS2, yeah. Uh-huh. That's, I never heard of it until Phenomenal you told it to me. Phenomenal game. Uh, yeah, so that, I guess it just depends where you are, not paying attention or what, because I, you figure a game like that, that's that good. Sony then published if it gets... game by Sony Cambridge that was to be fair, mm-hmm. looks like a PS3 launch game. It's making the PS2 melt internally. Mm-hmm. It looks incredible. All the reflections and the effects and just the Even, facial uh, animation, everything looks great in that game. But it just didn't get yeah. bought. I think no. it must have got pushed, but it didn't get bought, reviewed Even, reasonably well. Even like Eternal Champions. It's a fighting game. But everyone yeah. was playing Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat. No one was playing Eternal Table. No. I think and by the time that came out, I think you already had um what's that 3D fighting game? That Virtual Fighter. Yeah. So I mean, you now you moved on from that. So Well the thing is with like when a film comes out, you know, you get 
the big volcano film and then you get mm-hmm. whatever Dante's Peak and then you get Blah Blah Inferno and then you get all the other ramel that comes yeah. out after like Jurassic Park comes out and then there's all of a sudden there's like Jurassic Death and <laughs> yeah. I think Eternal Champions wrongly because I think it was produced Pretty by good. Sega themselves is actually yeah. the, the animation inside it is comic zone level from mm-hmm. my experience each character's got their own individual traits and how they move and the pixel art is absolutely beautiful no it is um but uh, even in the arcade i remember um ninja baseball batman <laughs> not a lot of people heard of it but i reviewed it uh a while ago because uh, i have a you know i have all the games emulated for the arcade yeah that was probably at the, on my arcade for like two months and then it was gone apparently no one was playing it because it was just weird i thought it was awesome but if you tell people ninja baseball batman they're like what are you talking about and then when you show them a picture, somehow they remember seeing it somewhere, but never yeah. actually actually playing it. So I guess those are some of mine. But the one I have currently, which you can download, Darkwood. Mm. If you like horror games. I don't know what my most obscure current gen title is. I don't I mean you have, a, you have a lot of games though. You know some, me. Some I never heard of. You, the, you know, up until very recently, I always thought the Yakuza franchise was quite obscure. Mm. There, there were a lot of people that kind of looked on the periphery and never played it. I mean, you've never played it, um, as far as I'm aware. What about Shenmue? Shenmue? That, yeah, Shenmue. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. Call it Shenmue. Call it what you like. From <laughs> now on, on the show, we'll call it Shenmue. Okay? And then people can write in and tell us we got it wrong. But only if they listen to this episode do they know that we've made the Does. mistake. You'd, you'd think Shenmue was an obscure game but he's carried a cult phenomenon with it that as i've said in the past if as many people had bought that game as backed it on kickstarter and will tell you it's in their top 10 games of all time mm-hmm. if they'd all bought that on dreamcast say could still be around uh mm-hmm. just bonkers you know that game is obscure those that played it back in the day there's not there couldn't have been that many and the dreamcast also had a game called the no- I think it's called Nomad Soul. I think it might have been called Omnicron or something like that in the US. Mm-hmm. had a David Bowie soundtrack. It was written by no the guy way. who did Fahrenheit and Heavy Rain. Is it David okay. Cage? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it might have been his first game that he produced with his studio. It's proper wonky now, buddy. It really is. Um, but it's not a bad title by any stretch. But it is obscure. Yeah. Even his his follow up game, I think, which would be probably classed as Fahrenheit, which has seen a physical re release on PS4 and a re release on PlayStation 4, and I think mm-hmm. other formats. It was on Xbox original back in the day as well, uh, and on PS2. Great game. Yeah. Overlooked. Does that make it obscure? I mean, there's hidden gems, which I think we've touched on a couple there. Yeah. yeah. And then there's obscure. I, like, uh, yeah, obscure is like, all right, it's out, but who heard of it? Yeah, like, I think so. Like Where who, Shen, like, honestly, Shen and Mew, I don't yeah. think that's an obscure game. Or is it an obscure? It's not an obscure game. I mean, I guess you know about it. I never played it. I mean, for me, no one's played Darkwood that I that I know. They never even heard of it. So for me, that's up there. Where's Where I've I, 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 I've at least heard of Shen, right? You yeah. know, like uh, the horror game Kuan. I've heard of it. Now people played it back in the day. Now it's like a thousand dollars. Is that really obscure? I guess in a way, if no one played it. I'm writing. I've written down. You can see because we sit opposite each other there. I've written yeah. Darkwood down in my book. Okay, I'll look. I'll look at that and surely. Pretty. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we talked about easiest and hardest trophies last week, mm-hmm. achievements or whatever it is, and the history of them. Um. What do you think is the hardest game that you've ever played? There's so many hard games. For me, you've got to go back to the 16-bit era to get something that's absolutely obtuse to yeah, the point mean, of being ridiculous. Even the PlayStation games, some of them are like, really, bro? Original PlayStation? Yeah, some of them were just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, well, uh, as, we, as we know, back in the day, they couldn't... They, they couldn't make long games, so they just no. made them... Brutal. So hard. Like Street Fighter 2010. Good luck. <laughs> okay. You have like one continue. 
So I guess so though that they are in the mindset of the fact that you've played a lot of Street Fighter 2. No, this, this is nothing to do with Street Fighter. It's like a fighting game. It's like a platformer action game. Oh, where you, right. play as, you play as Ken from Street Fighter 2. You know, it's not Ken because the Americanized version, you know, they butchered it. And uh, you play as Ken and you fight your way through levels and you fight a is boss. Is that Dave or Red Diesel like in here out there? That's Red Diesel. Oh. Yeah, Dave has more of a, like a Royal well, Rumble. That's more like a... Yeah. Adventure. Yeah. Um, but to get... First of all, to get to the last level was amazing. You got that far. Then if you did get to the last level, there's a platforming section where the screen comes up. So if you're not fast enough, you're going to die. Oh, okay. Man. Then when you get to the boss, you have one life bar. He has like three. It's just ridiculous. It's just extremely tough. That's like obscene. Batman's tough. Batman's tough too. But at least if you die, you just go back to the beginning of the level. You yeah. die in Super Street Fighter too. To 2010, you're going back to the beginning of the game, dude. It's not acceptable, is it? Like Metroid. Play Metroid, especially newer listeners or like younger listeners without a without a, a guy. Good luck. Yeah, no, that that's true. Well, hang on a minute. I've got El Buccio on the phone. Bear with me. Yeah, no, sorry, El Buccio. Yes, El Buccio. Yes. He says he came here to hear what's in the mailbag. So without further ado, our Mexican overlord demands... I mean, he's sending all sorts of different bags to the US here, but uh, he wants us to look in the mailbag. I don't know. Who's in there first? The Dale Mills. He says, easiest, I'd have to say, Dorito Crash Course on the 360. Barely a game. <laughs> ah, hardest school day, straight back to school on the ZX Spectrum. Uh, impregnate me, he says. <laughs> Even now, I still struggle. Obscure, magical flying hat turbo adventure on the Mega Drive. Poopy version of Decap Attack was the Western release. Its master oh. system cousin, Psycho Fox, was an absolute delight, though. He's tickled, your, he's tickled your grey matter, hasn't he? Yeah, pretty cool. Yes, here's our boy, Johnny Island Gaming. Johnny Sisland. Johnny, Johnny Sisland. <laughs> he is getting, he's knocking on the door of being a true new 100% or he just needs to bring someone, a new listener into the Discord and to subscribe. Oh, and he needs to leave a review and then he might be the inaugural 100%er. He gets the... Now, we've realized the fans, there's a, there's, a, there's a want out there, you know, for a cassette, tape cassette mm-hmm. episode of the show of their choosing. I'm sure That'd I can make awesome. that happen. Um, don't know if I can promise to print pink tape, but I have. Found in Tom's apartment here, blank cassettes, 90 minutes long, so you might not get a full show because we do tend to warble on a little bit. But if we recorded this on the long tape version, we might get enough time to get the whole show on it. We'll get some album art made. You'll get Remember that. Remember that? Recording on a VHS, 30, 60, no. Two hours, three hours, six hours? Yeah, with the EQ mode. Well, these, yeah. there's, awesome. I've, got a, I've actually got a cassette recorder that I can plumb into the machine that we can record in the same way That's but the awesome. listeners will have to let me know whether they want that or not because they might not have a tape player that will do that so let me also why can you hear have... that that is a brand new sealed yeah. cassette that's awesome legit but why did tom have like a whole case load of these he liked to record his uh, victims cries while he was out recording his thespian work he wanted Makes to make sense. sure he heard every single whimper they made while they were locked in the dungeon I mean, I feel like I was in, like, 95 when I saw all those blank cassettes. Wow. Okay. I've never seen so many like that done in person. Well, that's Tom for you. He's an eccentric man. He is. What We got very distracted. What's uh, Johnny Island Gaming say for himself? He, he, can I say two games? Of course you can. We got Sleepwalker for the Amiga and Manuel Samuel. I never heard of uh, Sleepwalker. So uh, one you see playing as a dog kicking your sleep, uh, sleepwalking owner over drains and gaps, <laughs> so while the other you are living manually, breathing, walking, driving, peeing, impressing your boss and fighting the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. Sleepwalker from memory. Now, again, we want people to message in and let me know if I'm, I'm wrong or if I'm right. 
But I believe that had a tie-in. Over here, we do a load of comedians get together to do Red Nose Day for good causes, sometimes in Africa, sometimes in the UK, uh, for the children. It's all based around comedy. So it's called the Red Nose Day, like a clown would wear. Uh, and it's like a, a telethon on a Friday evening where they get people to donate cash. And Sleepwalker was a spin-off game that was actually... I had it. I know I had it, but I can't seem to find my 16-bit home computer games anywhere. I bought Sleepwalker. High on the hype, Bobby. But it was actually a good game. It was difficult. I'm, I'm suggesting he's sending these in as his most obscure games. It was difficult, but it wasn't ridiculous. It was quite a good notion. You were a dog. You you woke up and saw your owner was walking out. So you chase after them and you have to try and, because they're sleepwalking, kick them over drains. And then it's like a puzzle platformer. It's, it's quite a cool yeah. idea. Probably one that might be worth revisiting by someone. But there you go. Up next, the young bull, the Irish premium beef, C. Pliskin. This is going from your audio. Easiest would be Little Planet, Little Big Planet 3 for the PS4. I grew up on Little, on, I grew up a little playing the first two games in the series, and maybe it was because of that, of the better experience, but I felt three was easily the easiest, especially compared to the mechanics of one. Hardest would then go to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Why is that title so long? He asks. Uh, because of the Soulsborn, etc. design of the combat and trial and error I had to survive. And my most obscure being Letter Quest Remastered for the Switch, which I really liked, being a turn based puzzle game forming attacks around words. Even if the statist effects inflicted by enemies and the somewhat small acceptable dictionary of the game has to be a little frustrating. Uh, yeah, Little Big Planet 3. Not sure if I've played that on PS4. I must have. Must have. Jedi yeah, Fallen in, yeah. Order. Started that with my boy. It's a good game. Yeah, we he tired of it because it, yeah. we couldn't put like outrageous hats and skins on, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But uh, there you go. I'm sure we'll come back to it eventually. Letter Quest Remastered. That is an obscure game because I've never heard of it. I've heard of it, but I never played it. Hmm. Okay. Bobby, get your new listener sound montage together because we've got a new, new listener. listener. Dan turn a photo. What's he got to say? It's got to be Jitteru Man for me. Git, Gitteru. Oh, Gitteru. See, I, I say things wrong all the time. You, uh, you're all quite good. obscure and difficult in terms of a story. You're a Japanese schoolboy who gets kidnapped by a dog. That's also a boombox to go save a planet by way of weaponized music battles with various crazy looking instruments called Gitteru. A timing based beat em up a la Papa the Rapper with the added element of having to move the analog sticks around as well as pressing buttons to the beat. Such a cool but surprisingly difficult game. Absolutely loved it. Uh, now, I've heard, I think that's on my list. Uh, I think it was on PS2. I think as if anyone's got a copy of Gitteru Man or Beautiful Joe mm-hmm. 1 and 2 that they want to send to me, just because, do you know what, I'm worth it. Or we're worth it. Weekly content surely is worth it. Uh, you let me know. I've uh-huh. heard of Papa Rapa the Rapper, but I never heard of this game. Papa the Rapper, Gitteru Man, yeah. Came out, for me, I feel like it came out around the same time as Beautiful Joe, and they kind of vied for attention because they were both a little bit out there in regards mm. to their design and implementation. But yeah, Gitteru Man, good call. Interesting. Bada, bada bing, retro gaming. Still to this day, <laughs> I find one of the most hardest games I've ever played is the SNES Super Pro Protectors, Alan uh, Alien Rebels, uh, Contrara 3 for you Americans, closely followed by the illusion of time. Even as an adult, I, I just can't get past the first two stages. <laughs> the easiest, I think, is the new modern warfare. I actually found that it is in the hard modes, and in sure, I think I have to go with... A uh, plot or prehistoric man, not for the snails. Uh, no, ma- no many people have played either of those games. Bada bings to retro. He's the Italian stallion. Not only of retro gaming, but quite honestly, the show. He's a he legend. In because he's got those Italian genes, you know he is handsome. Uh-huh. You know he is. Devil of a man. 
Don't leave him alone with Eva, because before you know it, they'll be hooking up. <laughs> All right? Don't leave your wife loafing round by the big star retro gaming. Ah, Eva, I like the smell of you. You smell fantastic. You're so beautiful a woman. Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta be. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a scoundrel. He's, he's picked hardest super pro protectors. I think that's renowned for being a little bit on the harder side. Bobby, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, contra three is pretty tough. Probably a cakewalk for a man of your skills. That's why you're here to bolster up my no, lack I mean, of it's, gaming ability. It's definitely, no, it's definitely hard. Closely followed by the illusion of time. I remember that being a SNES RPG. I think you might have reviewed it as well. Mm-hmm. I it's never a heard of it. A bit obscure. Pluck. Pluck or prehistoric man. They were. I think Pluck was a very bizarre shaped pink. It was around the time of like oh, that's the one with like the hand on the cover, the weird hand. Yeah, I think it might be his, that might be him. Uh, I think that it was around the time of like, oh, we need to come up with a character to front our. Yeah, everyone had the characters in their yeah, they did. platformers, didn't they? We had a we had a ton of them. Here's a man who we're quite keen of. He's one of the trifecta, which is Edigmatic Productions. Some would say this is the the brains of the operation, mm-hmm. the Hannibal, the Plan Man. The man with a suitably amazing set of neckerchiefs that he wears like a desert raider. You know, sometimes it's hard to watch the videos when he wears one of those beautiful neck scarves. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Harvey Retro we labelled as royalty, but he surrounds himself with an iconic cast of almost equal similar characters. They oh, are like, bro, hundred percent. Our enigmatic productions, the three yeah. musketeers of gaming. I be, I like it, bro. I like it. Porthos, aka Johan Artwork, says one of the hardest games I have ever played is Neo. A lot of people will say games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but Neo, I'd have to agree with them. Neo is probably mm-hmm. one of the most approachable games I have had the misfortune to play. Takes the cake uh, and just how unfair it is. The first levels have no tutorial at all, Mm-mm. and you die constantly because you have no idea about the boss's path pattern. He's Johan, he speaketh the truth. Yeah. Sometimes it's just random. It took me forever to get through it. And even after that, I felt more like I was working than feeling accomplished. Yeah, I've, I think I, Neo was a PSN free game. I think it's an, uh, it was, yeah. an exclusive. How they have part two out, which is even harder than the first one. I thought to myself, oh, yeah, I'll give this Neo a go. Oof, my goodness gracious me. This and then is you one think, obnoxious title. You think that you played Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Mm. Oh, okay, it's kind of similar. And then you realize very quickly you get wrecked. Have you finished Blood? Uh, have you finished Neo? No. Wow. I will though. It's got you beat. Well, I just played the first level, but I had other things to play. So I want to try it out. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to it. I got the, uh, the complete version. Mm-hmm. So it has the DLCs and all that stuff. So I'll do it. Wow. Okay. Well. Yeah. Pull yourself a long one for that. Who's next? This man was yeah. a new listener, but now he's a seasoned contributor. Mr. Graham dot C. Yeah. Hardest secure. Easiest. My name is Mayo. <laughs> Road to bustle obscure. Go go golf on the PS2. Hmm. Go go golf. That's the. Is that not the name for everybody's golf? I don't know. I never heard of that, and I never heard of road bustle. Me neither. So Mr. Graham C is currently winning. But the my prize. name is Mayo. Definitely up there. I mean, it's even a game. Have you fin? Have you have you platinum that? In about three minutes. Do I get that? All you have to do is touch a can, a jar of mayo, ten thousand times with your finger. Ten thousand times. Yeah. Or you just use your the X button. It's a really stupid game, but you know what? I'm I'm guilty of buying it just for the platinum because you got to move up in the leaderboards. <laughs> you absolute rat. It well, without that platinum, right? Those platinums are what got you the interview with Zutamax to get you on the job. So they feel like they've had a, an MVP hire. So 
I must personally thank the developer of My Name is Mayo for actually sending you our way. Thank you. I'm happy to. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. but it's time to get your clapping hands out, Bobby. Daniel Sonic 87 is a new New listener. listener. What's he got to say? I don't know what that is. Hardest, he says, is Don Don Patchy, <laughs> Resurrection on Xbox 360. Easiest, he says he doesn't know. So he's never found an easy game. Didn't Daniel. we see that game on somebody's Stingway boots? Don Don Patchy? Yeah. He did, right? Look at you. You look at the brain on you. So, listen, one of my mind works. It really is in there. Well, you can't just say his name one time. I tell you who I think it was. It was Sharaban. Oh, really? Sharaban? Sharaban, oh, he's up early. Get back down. We'll wait no for the idea. Yeah. Uh, up next, he's been on the show before, but he's come back. Oh Heart yeah, open. King GP Icon seventy nine says the hardest game. He's done. Hmm, musing <laughs> emoji. So many soul crushers. I would say Ninja Gaiden three on the NES. I spent mm-hmm. all summer playing and never made it past the third act. The easiest probably Shrek on PS three. I forget which one. Don't don't laugh at me. <laughs> I had a three-year-old at the time, laughing with a, with a teeth emoji. Uh, the most obscure would be Willy Wombat on the Sega Saturn. Again, I think that is one of those character of platformer games that probably arrived a little too late. Arriving on everyone else moves to three D. Willy yeah, Wombat Ninja turns Gaiden up. Three was tough, dude. Any Ninja Gaiden? I think by the time Ninja Gaiden got to the Xbox, PS, and PS3 or PS2, uh, or was it on PS? Three and original Xbox, it'd become a much more approachable game. Mm-hmm. Much yeah. more approachable. The 8 bit, 16 bit Ninja Gaidens are brutally, brutally tough. Yeah. You'll bet you could talk for sure. The 16 bit prick, new listener. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's his name. I can't even sense it. It's what he calls himself. Has he had a clap? I think he's had a clap. Let's give him a clap. New, new listener. listener. He's got a YouTube channel, and I've checked a couple of his videos out. The one that stuck with me was his review of um, the very well edited, very very nice pieces of kit. So if you're not following him, listeners, go go give him a follow. Um, while you're there, you know our egos can't take too much. We don't publish content to it all the time. Although a return to streaming one day will happen, but uh, give us a click and then go give the 16-bit brick a click. <laughs> uh, his YouTube channel. He did a review of GT Advance, which is like a, a an advance, a Game Boy Advance version of Gran Turismo. I had that game back in the day when I used to roam the world with my Game Boy Advance, and I uh, have to admit, watching his review, elicited some good memories, to be fair. So fair play to him That's for cool. that. Uh, he says, um, the hardest for me has got to be Dragon's Lair on the NES. I don't know if it's because the controls are crap or if the animation is so stiff, but it's relentless. How about also, both? Probably, more than likely. Uh, also, when you run out of lives, it's straight back to the beginning of the game where you have to fight a dragon on a bridge before you can make it, even mm-hmm. make it into the castle. Terrible and also hard. The easiest is a tricky one for me. Possibly the first Tony Hawk's game. Uh, the first, the first, he says, so he must mean the original, original. Uh, it might have been because I played it to death since release, but I breezed through. I still enjoy, though, which is the main thing. The newer WWE games are terrible, in my opinion, but also incredibly easy, as long as you time the reverse moves correctly, which I can't do. So it's it's horses for courses, 16-bit, mm. um, which will become easy to do the game because it becomes a walk in the park. Most obscure, perhaps a game I only played recently for the PS2, which I'd never heard of before, buying 187 Ride or Die. Bought it purely for the front cover, cartoon style with a man in a woman. A man in a woman. That's uh, uh, illegals. In a low rider shoe. <laughs> Maybe a man and a woman. In a low rider shoe. Because <laughs> a man in a woman in a low rider shooting grenade launcher rounds out of the car. Uh, is like a, a is movie a I want to see. Is a mind picture and, and, and a movie you, you probably get shadow banned from Google for. Mm-hmm. Turns out it was fantastic playthrough on two player. Me and my mate got a good laugh from it. Can't grumble for a one pound game. I love the one pound game, 16 mm-hmm. bit bricks. So keep them coming in. He's also in the Discord. He says, Worst part was it sat on my shelf for 10 plus years before I got around to it. We've all got them. We've yeah. all got them, Mr. 16 bit. Uh, 
he's close to being 100 percenter. He needs to put a hashtag Stingray's boot. He needs to ring, he needs to strong arm someone to listen to the show. He needs to leave us a review anywhere he can, either on Podchase or iTunes or Spotify. Then he can leave a review on Spotify. But if you do manage to leave a review on there, better play to you. You just won the internet. Uh, and he's in the Discord, so he, he's going for the full thing, as is Mr. Graham C., I believe. So, mm-hmm. what's your thoughts on that? Where did we get to? Dragon's Lair on the NES. You're a NES man. You play that? It's horrible. Is it? I mean, even the arcade is it's a It's a game where you have to just memorize the book. timing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and, and a, an amazing memory. Easy Very... as Tony Hawk's, which. No, I never played Tony Hawk. I've played. Two and three, I think the wheels off. Uh, WWE games, yeah, they can be easy. I think the last one I played was uh, the one for PS2. Here comes the pain. Maybe it was just SmackDown. SmackDown, just bring it. Yes, that's it. With the rock on the cover, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last one I ever ever played. My goodness gracious! My favorite wrestling game ever is the WWE on the arcade. Is it? Oh my god, it's amazing! I wow. just love that game. And actually, what wasn't bad? Uh, my friend had it. WWE Legends. It has yes. uh, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan on the cover. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty cool. You see, if Tom was here, he'd tell you that we like our even the realistic wrestling games. Yeah, yeah. Boring that as was, we are. That was pretty cool. Um, so thank you for that sixteen bit. Got to say his full name, really. I feel like it's a PG show, and he's called himself the 16 bit prick. He's walked us into a PG 13 mm-hmm. rating there uh, just by having him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the guy. Uh, oh, who's next? Our, our brethren. Comic Picture 79. Let's face it, all right? Get to know Comic Picture 69, the Celtic Picasso. Mm-hmm. Because if your comment's deemed good enough, these comments we're reading out now. Once a month, we pick the best one, which is now Bobby's responsibility. He's got the Judge Judy wig and gown, mm-hmm. uh, and he decides who's comment of the month. Last week, it was Rave. You owe us a post, because that's all we ask. You get your free thing, you do a post. Tag us and comment pictures. What's Adam the artist got to say? He says Dark, Dark Souls 2 is hard. Subject. Oh. <laughs> Dark Souls 2 was hard <laughs> first time I completed it I had no idea you can co-op the game is sprawling it doesn't hold your hand at all and the bosses can be quite intimidating but there are just areas in the game that are absolute chore to get through crawling one enemy at a time it's not particularly great game and the change control from the first and third make it more or less forgiving unable to cancel those panic extra button presses or having only 8 directional movement systems Unfortunately, it was the first one of the series I played, so I didn't realize for how long, uh, how good the other games were, because I expected the entire series to have that the same issue. Honorable mention is Nem- Nemesis Gradius. That game is hard as men. Is that a bullet hell shooter? I, I agree. They're both very great. I just when I see people playing those bullet t- bullet hell shooters, I'm like, how are you even able to move through that sea of death? And you know what? When I play games like that, I can't look at my ship. I have to look at everything else. You have to be one with, you, with the ship. You have to become the Neo of shooters. If you're looking you? at your ship to avoid bullets, you're never gonna do it. You just have to be what you have to do in those games is become a Jedi Master. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to disagree. And you have to know where you are. And Again, it's a memorization thing, though, as well, because they come, the patterns are the, the same. The patterns are the same, but you're never going to do the same thing twice. No, well, that's a fact. Yeah. So you think you're going to be in that corner hiding out, but in reality, just take one straight bullet. Well... Talking of one stray bullet, here's the one stray member of the show. He's out there. He's crazy. His new burgeoning rapper name, RGT. He's got an album coming out this Christmas. It's called uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rapping Under the Christmas Tree. Mm-hmm. It's a Christmas-themed rap album by he raps. Suffolk's Finest. Yeah, while yeah. He raps. That's he raps amazing. while he raps. It's absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. And, and, the, and the central sort of 
song that's built around it is a Christmas theme as well. So he breaks into the chorus mm-hmm. of Jingle Bells. He breaks into the chorus of uh, Silent Night. And he's got a couple of in there. Some say Mariah Carey is absolutely trembling at the fact that she's not going to get any plays unless she links up with RGT for the final track on the album, which could yeah. be getting recorded back end of this month. Anyway, Retro Gamer Thomas. The easiest game I've played is probably Iron Mayo. If you can actually call it a game, it's basically buy a platinum. And unfortunately, I did it. I'm not a gamer. Laughing till he cries emoji. What can I what can I say to you? You you scum pig. We're in the you, same boat. You and him. And we shared the same paddle. Yes. And we're going down the same creek, bro. You certainly are. You and him. Absolute scoundrels. Uh, who's next? King Lizard. What is this uh, legend of the show? Welcome back, King Lizard. We haven't had a comment from you in a long time, friend. I you know what's doing funny? Well. What? It's ironic that I'm going to read his comment out, and today he is my special guest for the post. King Lizard is. Yeah. Give him a squeeze. Let him know yep. that we love him. We appreciate him. He says, the easiest for me was Super Destronaut DX on Xbox One. All 100G in 22 minutes. 1,000G? Don't, oh, don't, don't sell him short. He sold his soul. My bad. Uh, it's still good to replay, though. Big, uh, big Sprite Space Invaders. The hardest game for me is Bloodborne. I thought I cleared the village. Yes, I know. Two laughing now. Two crying emojis. Crying smiley emojis. And that dude with the giant cleaver murdered me again. <laughs> I don't think I have a single trophy. I still love it, though, and we'll go back on my punishment soon. Same deal with Dark Souls 3. Not even cl- cleared the first boss. Preaching up with three laughing, crying emojis. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, bro. Um, I'll tell you what. If you play that game with headphones on in the dark, it could be card scary. Which one? Bloodborne? Bloodborne. Or well, either one, because sometimes you don't see the enemy. And next thing you know, you get hit oh, in the back. And you, you know, you kind of I, think, it, you I know? think if you had the patience, if you were a younger gamer and you had the patience and you got it and you did play with headphones on in the dark, you'd be terrified. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think any game where your life is a sure. whack or two whacks away from being exhausted in a spooky setting yeah. ends up being a scary game regardless. Mm-hmm. Look at Minecraft. I mean, there's been times where I've been playing no. that. When you first fought those little demon thingies yeah i didn't expect that at all, bro. people don't when they first realize what's in that game they're like oh my god I was like, I what know. is this and uh, i'm like what is uh, that, sound, bro? that was crazy uh, what is that all yeah these. i didn't expect that at all yeah so that that kind of got me as a jump scare i guess well someone else who never gets scared he's the toughest strongest man on the show he wears a leopard skin loincloth, and anyone that wears a leopard skin loincloth ain't scared of nothing. It's Finster Gamer. I still stand by Cuphead being the hardest game I've played due to a combination of its infamous difficulty and the fact that platformers aren't exactly my forte to begin with. I suppose game obscurity is subjective because I don't particularly know what other people may or may not have heard of, but I loved Legendary and Brink, which both flew under the radar a bit on release. Speaking of obscure games, the PS2 survival horror Obscure was an awesome game, which had vibes of the faculty as you play as a group mm-hmm. of teens in a high school. Now, that sounds like it could be an absolutely belting game. I remember playing it a, lot, a long time ago, but Obscure was pretty cool. My friend had it. He went to his house and played it. Good okay. game? From what I remember, it was interesting. I don't know if it was good because I was just watching him play it. But I want to get my hands on it. never did. Right. Never heard of Legendary. I heard of Brink. Yeah, I've heard of Brink. It's shoot FPS game, isn't it? And Cuphead is ridiculous. I haven't downloaded Cuphead yet. I still don't think I'm ready to. I love I the animation style. So I grew up on those sorts it. of cartoons. But There's a guy on Instagram. I think his name is Spicy Donut. Right. He draws very similar to that art style. Wow. I, re- I really uh, like his art. It is nice. I'm getting to be a regular contributor in my PS2 library. Uh, he does great stuff. You want to check him out. He's got 
a couple of PS2 games, to say the least. He says, Hardest Smugglers Run 2, unfair, brutal. Devil May Cry 3, fair, but brutal. Easiest star, perhaps, say, every Quantum Dream title and most obscure, messed up, I would say, is SeaWorld's Seamus Deep Sea Adventure, a terrible platforming game that capitalizes on the name of a real-life captive killer whale who went on to die from poor conditions at only nine. This game exists, existing is a real message from the past and totally nuts to me. Well, that's an ending. That brought a very solemn end to the show, but uh, to the feature, but thank you for that, my PS2 library. An absolute uh, plethora of interesting comments from people. If they you want to message what? in, what they got to do? Whoa, tell me something. Did you do yours? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Where am I? Not here. I'm I sorry. Continue. Continue. No, because I was wobbling on about most obscure. I was waffling on about Shen and Moo. Did you do the easiest and hardest? I don't remember if you did it. If you did, I'm sorry. Easiest? Murdered Soul Sp- Suspect wasn't difficult, was it? Not difficult. I think all the Walking walk Dead games, well, any Telltale game. Really. Um, and hardest? What's the game that's driven me the most nuts? Like, if you do a controller one time in a game, that's I remember I'm normally quite controlled. Mm-hmm. I'm normally quite controlled, but one game that actually left teeth marks Here in my go. controller as a mm-hmm. kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've not done it since. I I bit my Super Nintendo <laughs> controller in rage <laughs> at this freaking savagery. Savagery. All right, with Super Star Wars oh, on the bro, SNES. That game is ridiculous, dude. Like, imagine your mom gets you that game as a kid. You oh, I Star asked Wars. for it. I think and I saved it. You can't even get past the second it. level. Oh, mate. The first level is a wake up call slap in the face. The June C. Yeah. Right. That will hoover life's out of you quick. I think then you get to drive mode seven in the land speeder, which I was like hyped for. Mm-hmm. And then, well, I don't know which order it's in, but then you've got, you've got, to, you've got to get in to the sand crawler, mm-hmm. which is bad enough because the screen doesn't seem to move up, so you can't quite see where you need to jump, and you can it's get ridiculous. shot off screen. I mean, it looks beautiful. All the Super Star Wars games are ridiculous. But then you get inside the sand crawler, and things get... So you got further than I did. Oh, yeah, but my ne- my SNES controller looked like an orthodontist tool. Man. You could recast my young teeth off the back of where- wherever that... I'm sorry, because I traded that in. Mm-hmm. Whoever got that next, because there was a savage set of teeth marks in it where I was just like, ah! and I'm normally a cool cat. I'm normally a cool cat, but that pushed yeah, me to happens. the extreme. Yeah, the best of you, bro. Well, I showed every facet of myself through Super <laughs> Star Wars. Elation, <laughs> devastation, <laughs> and whatever else, everything in between. I don't know what to say. Um. If they want to message in and be part of the comments on there, they've just got to keep their eye on Twitter or Instagram. We put up a post asking for your comment on the topic of the week. It's easy. They've all done it. Do you know what? You can too. In fact, there's someone there right now. Yeah. No. Hang on a minute. One of those moments. Yeah, I'm talking to you. No, don't just discount this. You've listened to so many of these episodes now. I know who you are, okay? And you've never commented. What? That's totally your call. But why don't you join the family? Crawl out of the woodwork. Get Bobby and me to laugh as we clap. The herald, the name of a new listener. You're not a new listener because you've listened to so many of these shows. I love clapping. Let us clap. clap One episode, one time, I feel sad. Long time listener, first time poster. I would love to see that. Come on, you know who you are. Guilty as charged. Yes, you. No, you. A lot of uh, lurkers. Lurkers, stop being a lurker. Join us. Be join us. Join the cult. Yeah, then get in the Discord. <laughs> Be assigned an active cult member to watch your every move. If you're not commenting every hour, I'm joking. It's not like that. We're all friends here, <laughs> but we'd love to have you comment on the show. Let's vary it up a little bit. Those that pay attention, they know, they know that when the feature's done, we click on Instagram on our phones. We click on the good old 
magnifying glass on the bottom. We type in hashtag Stingray's boot. Not boots. Stingray's boot. 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 We click on recent. And every week, we read out your pickups for the gaming week. Yes, we do. You just got to put your pickups on Instagram, put hashtag Stingray's boot, and me and Bobby will go through and critique them. So, Stingray's been around your area. What have you bought out of this boot? New and old, pop funk, a real Stingray, boots, shoes. We've had it all in here. Bada the Retro Gaming, the Italian Stallion's first in the boot. He's got a copy of Super Dino Dino's Kickoff Revival, a game that uh, was in many 16-bit home computers back in the day. Better than FIFA 21, if you ask me, he says. Beautiful. I like the box. I like the hang tab on that card box. Tell me more about that when you get to five minutes. Better than uh, EA's attempt at the cover of these days. Very much so. At least it looks like a football game and not like a pin board. Who is Dino Dino? Dino Dino, I think he was a, a footballer from memory. I'm not big into the soccer, so I what? deal with it. You just said soccer? Oh, well, you know. Oh, no, bro. Look, Bobby, I know, you, I know you try and fit in and get all European, okay? But when I'm talking down the bodega, oh, if, I say, if I say football, I ain't got a clue what I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> so I say soccer, and they know what I'm talking about, okay? They do. All right? Up next, we've incited him once, but we had to calm him down. Which doctor like? Let's do it again. Sharaban? 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 He rises up. He knows the way to get in the boot is to display a collection of Vita games. Nothing gets me more excited in the gentleman trouser department than a selection of these. Uh, That's a good one. Yeah, Assassin's Creed, Bastion, physical copy. Fair play to him. Batman Blackgate was interesting but if you're going to go for the platinum for that game you might pull your hair out yeah I, I never I've Sly never, Cooper is good yeah the Sly Cooper I don't oh, know he's got both. the trilogy he he's got, got both, both. Yeah, yeah both That's the trilogy is good that other one's not as good but it's nah, still worth but a it's playthrough still, not, yeah definitely Wipeout he's got Charted Gold on Abyss he's got Virtua Tennis he's How got Tear that? Away that game on um, Bastion, I heard it was phenomenal. I think you'd like that. It's Never like really a it. isometric um, <laughs> dungeon crawler, for want of a better word. But the guy narrates it. There's a narrator as you play. You comments on your actions. Pretty cool. Trident Edge, another long-term contributor to the boot. And he's got his uh, Spike pad. River City Girls and a pretty cool. My game is pretty cool. Pretty smart looking arcade pad. Yeah. He's our French listener. Radbash Gaming, depleting the world of uh, Pop Funko's one step at a time. Yes. He's got a whole selection there. He's ooh, Some kind of those... Mario thing, too. Yeah, it looks like a, one of those boxes, what they're called. Do you know what, what, before we go off topic, I don't mean to? Why did you think Nintendo decided to put that cover of Mario dying on his own game as the artwork? Yeah, because... <laughs> I mean, he's just... he hit. First of all, he hit a wall, so yeah. he missed the jump, and now he's going to burn. And he threw a fireball. What was yeah. the point of that? To recreate that image, you have to die. Yeah, like, what were they thinking? I don't know. I, I love the fact that people have realized that, though, and it's become... Is this the, the only zeitgeist? game in history where a cut character has died and is going to go? Maybe they should message in and we can feature them after the news and before the feature, Bobby. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's one of those sort of loot boxes. He's got a Mario hat. He's got the bullet bill cushion. Mouse mat, maybe. Some magnets. Cowboy Bebop. Where have you seen Cowboy Bebop? Has he got that as well? Yeah. Well, he the, has, uh, yeah. I heard it was good, but I never saw it. Well, I'm not really into anime. I've heard it's quite good as well. Retro Gamer Thomas looks like he's got himself a, a, a physical buddy coming round. 
Yeah. Uh, a selection. That that room's looking very good. I like how he had his side and his friend's side set up. That's beautiful. This is a yeah. true kind right here. I don't know which side, though, because... If I had to take a guess... Yeah. I'm going to pick the left side as his with the military controller. So he's gone to the left with the military controller. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That, that's my. That's my. He's guess. racing for pink slips because he's put a picture of him and his family in the middle. It's like they're almost mm-hmm. to play for, and it looks like his friends taking the family home. So retro yeah. gamer Tom is so confident mm-hmm. in his FIFA 21 skills. He's put his wife and daughter on the line. Yeah, he's all in. I'd like to know what his his uh, competitors putting in. Uh, He's putting his family in. Interesting. Uh, Retro Visions. He's got a scribbled on Atari cartridge. The learning phone. It's always a lesson from him. He's got a utility cartridge. Oh, he has. A Pandora software power something. Power star. Don't ask questions. And then he's got a copy. It just says copy, cart copy, version 2.01. That's what this show is currently on, 2.1. Yeah, I guess so. Update. Uh, <laughs> up next, Oscat, the beautiful Oscat. Be kind to yourself, friend. Man, aren't these freaking Funko Pops really addicting? I mean, as I look at them, it's like, wow. I mean, they're so simple, but they look so much like the character. It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, well. It's really amazing. You've got Whoever two, did this so is you're... a genius. You're in on it now. You're, I got two. I bought two. Well, I yeah. just bought them for Halloween. Yeah, there'll be another one yet. I'm going to hold off, see if I can tell how long to hold off. Now, the Barbaro games, I don't know whether I like share my mind with the listeners, but this week I've been researching the mm-hmm. EA 007 games, specifically Agent Under Fire, Nightfire, and everything, all the thing which he's got. He's also got the N64 game, The World Is Not Enough, Tomorrow Never Dies on the PlayStation 1, and Kesson 3 on the PS2. I don't know why uh, I decided to deep dive these, but these were actually quite good Bond games when they came really? out. Really? Yeah. The only Bond game I ever, I ever played was, well, besides the NES, uh, Sega version, was uh, GoldenEye. Okay, well, if you get the chance to play Agent Under Fire or Nightfire, the first two, the third one switches it up from a first person to a third person view. There's another one as well called From Russia With Love where they actually recruited Sean Connery to re- revoice sections of the game. It uses the world is not enough engine. It's, oh, wow. I don't think they're as good. Agent of the Fire and Nightfire to me are, are actually okay. They look a bit dated now, but at the time they were fantastic. And, and from memory, I think they're reviewed pretty well, critically as well. So um, you've got to check the reviews of the era to find out. If you watch someone say, I should not very good, I've yeah. gone back through a million magazines and gone, no, at the time, this is well-received by people who played a lot of these games. So either they were getting paid off or it was good and it's not mm. aged well. But those, those two, Agent of the Fire and its sequel, Nightfire, actually were, were well-received and I think still stand up pretty well. It's a good afternoon's entertainment, if nothing else, like a Bond movie should be. Mm-hmm. Next up, Oscat again. We've got a box of Funkos here. That must have been the yes, cardboard yeah. container for his collection. Retro Visions, shown as the inside of RoboCop's crotch. Um, <laughs> got so, out of UK showing off his soon-to-be game room. What an absolute son of a gun. He's been holding out on us as oddest because he's got a Neo Geo there. He is... He's, he's got, got a Sega Mega Drive 2, 64, NES PS3, Mini, PS2, PS1, GameCube, Xbox, Wii, PS2... He's got PS3, 32X as well. Spectrum, Xbox, uh, both versions of Xbox, and a Sony CRT TV. Keep us in the loop on that one, Odders. Let's watch how that unfolds. He's also thrown out his copy of Primal Rage on the Mega Drive. The blue spined era. Nice to see. Um, nice right to there. see Odders in the boot. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening, and you've never, you don't want to comment. You're like, you're a little shy. Slap a hashtag Stingray's boot on your next upload, mm-hmm. eh? All right? That's how you get in. Just on the edge of the periphery. Circle, but you don't push all the way inside. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Radbash Gaming, again, he's got a copy of 
Halloween Town High. Probably Halloween High, Halloween Town, or whatever. All right, two. he's got he's got Halloween Town too. Yeah. Um, Andre the Giant Funko Pump, Pump Pump Funko, Florida <laughs> Stanley, uh, Johnny Sisland Gaming, the place wow. where he he games on a, an island. He takes all your sisters to Johnny Sisland Gaming. That's what got he a, does. A major stack of PS4 games. So big, he's had to put a guard dog on top of it. Yeah, I don't blame him. What's he got in there? He's got some good ones. He's got Assassin's Creed Odyssey. He's got Spyro Trilogy. Um, Looks like Crash Bandicoot. He's got the Days Gone Special Edition down at the bottom as well. Yeah, Bloodborne. Mafia. Death Stranding Steelbook. Last of Us 2. If you don't want that, send it to me. Ghost of Tsushima Steelbook. If you don't want that, or have I got the steel book? No, I haven't. Send it to me. Ghost of Shima Day is gone. He's got some good hitters here. Yeah, he's got all those steel books at the bottom there. He's not messing mm-hmm. about. Last of Us Part 2, steel book. Oh, no. It's a standard copy of that. Okay. The balance is restored. Then it's us. Rabbit, we... dirty self promotion lists. And if we scroll down, we got the Monkery Gamer. That's he's how got, you get in. He's done yeah. it. He, I don't think we've seen him before. I don't think so either. He's got so, Defender of the Crown, uh, Defender of the Crown, Shadowgate, yeah. and Gauntlet. And Gauntlet for the NES. That's interesting. I would that's say really that's cool. three pretty cool games. Gauntlet that is, is a fantastic game, especially multiplayer. Gauntlet's fun, but the problem with Gauntlet is that your life always goes down no matter what you do. Even if you stand still or don't move, your life goes down. That keeps you pushing forward. You have no choice. There's enough food, potions. Okay, it's pretty cool. Do you have any potions or food? Yep. Um, Bada Binks to Retro Gaming. He's coming in with his Italian-themed Mega, Mega Drive 2. Yeah, it's not italian theme, but you know why not now? It, it, so it the plays Master Palmer System, Ham. We, we didn't get that over here in America. You did. What was it called? The Master System. We had a Master System here? Yeah, it just wasn't very popular. The NES conquered all. The Genesis came out, I remember that. Yeah. And I, I know you guys called it the Mega Drum. But yeah. the Master System, I thought, was only for you guys, too. I'm pretty sure North America got the Master System as well. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It was their equivalent of the NES. It came after. It was slightly more powerful, could do more colors on screen, but it just could not dent mm. the NES stranglehold, which is why they released the Genesis and tried to get it out early, 16-bit, which succeeded because yeah, everyone in did. America went, oh, flashy new thing, let's get that. It was significantly more powerful. I love the way it looked. That little switch to the left, that's pretty dope. Yeah, very cool. Radbash Gaming again. He's got him, he's a collectible man. He's got one of those bath ducks. He's got... And, a, and a Amiibo yeah. from Animal Crossing. Yes, he has. Mega Man toys, Persona, Ooh, Cyberpunk. The Hunter for Bloodborne, Funko Pop. Yeah, he's got them all, hasn't he? Nice. I haven't liked that yet. Let me double tap that bad boy. The Barbary Games. Throwing up a selection of uh, PS2, some rare titles there. Some Kessen there, yeah, man. Yeah, sure. And some uh, Atari carts. You were Band correct. Card. This is the full turn of the wheel because there's his Don 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 Patchy. Uh, yeah, collection. how crazy is that? You don't forget anything, do you? I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> okay well if you want to be in stingray's boot yourself listen to stingray just put hashtag stingray's boot on your latest geek pickup and literally if you want to put a picture of your dog in feel free uh we'll take anything here it's time for the section we call stingray's boot this is the new releases what's the mythical mythical ray of stings been up to this week a lot apparently yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you gonna get gonna give me an insight? Because I believe he's been repurposing Santa Claus masks. He's been spraying the hair black and scattering them in viscal red paint to make them look scary. He's been drinking lots of Mountain Dew. He's been drinking lots of Mountain Dew. He's getting himself ready for the big bumper Halloween special. He definitely is. The inevitable Halloween special zero two as we call mm-hmm. it here on the show. Without further ado, 
He tears up fifth and main. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot was nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battlefront all this week. These are the new release highlights for this week, September 12th to October. No, that can't be right, can it? No, it can't be right. October 12th to October 18th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Listeners, these are out on physical or digital or will be by the time this podcast in your feed, but could be, I'm not even joking here, Bobby, it could be region dependent. Yep. Stingray's looking angry. He's like, you've messed up my intro far too many times. Why do I let you live? You scum-sucking pig. I do not know, Master. I do not know. Seemingly, he's got the ear of Buccio as well. He's he's yeah. in with Buccio more than me and you are. So we need to be I careful. mean, he's wearing old school tennis Nikes now. So I don't know what's going on with him. You see tennis Nikes? Yeah, straight up white. Actually, very fresh looking white Nikes. I see him in battered Chelsea boots. Beautiful. Wow. This is really a nice, interesting man. He is an enigma wrapped in a riddle. Anyway, have you picked your mummy mummy? Was that a yes? You can't nod on an audio show. Oh, I it? said I have. I didn't. Oh, right. I know, you, I know you're the video guru these days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick mine. I'm going to go completely out of left field with mine. Have okay. you picked your have you picked your VHS? Yes, I have. You have. I have yes, too. Okay. okay. We'll try and I'll try and remember it before we get to what you're hoping to play. So we can end the show in some sort of normal order for a change instead of an oh. Easter egg. Red Wings, Aces of the Sky, PC, PS4, Xbox One, October 13th. Red Wings, Aces of the Sky. Red Wings, Aces of the Sky, old boy, is an arcade action game that'll put you behind the controls of World War One warplanes. Accompany the legendary Red Baron and cheat death on your way to victory. What, eh? Hey? Next, we got, was it my, <laughs> my pick? We got oh, wow. Remothered. Yeah, Remothered Broken Porcelain for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, October 13th. Broken Porcelain brings an abundance of welcome changes to the series, introducing new gameplay and storytelling elements that breathe new life into the characters and an unprecedented level of immersion in this haunting adventure. I really like the first one. It's kind of like, kind of wonky at times, but apparently they improved on all that. So, Well, I'm not from what it. I've heard. I've heard it's a broken janky pile of nonsense, but... It, was, it wasn't no, a this, se- this sequel apparently is, is bug-ridden. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. That's not yeah. fun. It's been getting some hate. Uh-oh. Second Extinction on the PC, October 13th. Big map, big dinosaurs, big guns. With friends or solo. You face an ever-changing threat level. Second Extinction is an online FPS with bite. Up next, we got Torchlight 3 for PC, PS4, Xbox One, October 13th. In Torchlight 3, Nova Striva. I said that right, is again under threat of invasion and it's up to you to defend against the Netherum and its allies. Gather your wits and brave the frontier to find fame, glory, and new adventures. Again, another game. I never heard of the first two. Okay. At this point, does it even matter? <laughs> Oni Chanbara Origin, PC and PS4, October 14th. To commemorate the 15th anniversary of the sword fighting action game series, Oni Chambara, the events of the Oni Chambara and the Oni Chambari 2 have been completely remade in full HD. The evolution of this high speed action game cannot be missed. This might be my mummy mummy. Airplane mode, PC, October 15th. <laughs> Airplane mode delivers all the thrills of a real time six hour commercial airline flight in coach. At least you've got a window seat. Buckle up. Now, you get your phone, mm-hmm. the in, you get your in game phone to play little mm-hmm. games on. There's also a collection of cartoons and uh, black and white uh, movies to watch. They've obviously paid the license to get those. And the one that is hilarious. gives you a tray of food so that you can eat. Each time it's randomly different. Like there's a screaming baby that's not on every flight. Obviously, You know what you could do? Dave? Yeah. You can get your friend to come over with his uh, Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And he could play Flight Simulator. While you're playing airplane mode, and it's beautiful co-op without being a co-op game. Oh wow! He could take you six hours somewhere, okay? And this, he, he could be, yeah. This is amazing. I you, and you could do it now. I researched airplane mode. It even includes uh, the undocking from the ramp, the taxiing to the air to the runway, taking off. Now, can outside. you imagine if you time that right? 
That the power be. of the emotion when he takes off, and so do you. The same exact time. Oh, that's beautiful, bro. That's beautiful. I try. That happened. That <laughs> amazing. Uh, Cake Bash PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia, the powerfulest console on earth, backed by Zootamax Media itself. El Buccio's not just got one Stadia, he's got six, and he plays them on his 8K 400 foot screen. That's the sort of level El Buccio's at. Mm -hmm. Every other console, PlayStation, dead. Xbox, dead. Buried six foot under. Stadia, baby. October 15th, fight to be the tastiest cake and cake bash, a frantic four-player party game where adorable drawn-to-life cakes beat the crumbs out of each other. Up next, we got Cloud Punk. This looks actually PS4. quite good, by the way. Yeah, it, reading it now does. PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, October 15th. A neon Nior story in a rain-drenched cyberpunk metropolis. It's your first night on the job working for the Cloud Punk delivery service. Two rules. Don't waste the delivery. And don't ask what's in the package. You see, I've seen footage of this flying around uh, like a cyberpunk style world and you get out mm -hmm. and it's kind of like an isometric view but zoomed right out of this character that you move around. Cloudpunk, I think, is going to be big. Are I mean, you bald? Myself? Or, no, no, no. The guy in the game. I don't know. Because that could be just like the transporter with Jason Statham. Could be, but with a cyberpunk twist. Yeah, I like I would what love you've that. done there. I would okay. love that. Okay, well, this is uh, this was you last week in your deathbed <laughs> with oh, your yeah. Grand Slam Ring of Pain <laughs> on the PC, October 15th. This is uh, a six-hour toilet simulating. No, it's not. Enter the <laughs> Ring of Pain, a roguelike card crawler where encounters come to you. Each step around the ring, of ring a dire decision. Go for the loot or backs or backstab a creeping horror. Meet strange friends bearing gifts and treasure. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Up next, we got Roki for the Switch, October 15th. Rediscover magic and chart your adventure through this forgotten northern world of mystery and monsters. Uh, find your courage, discover hidden paths, solve ancient puzzles, and travel deeper through the icy land to learn, to learn the truth. Hmm. That does sound quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Space Crew, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, October 15th. The sequel to the Steam chart-topping, I think not just Steam, but I think it did well on most platforms, chart-topping World War II management simulator, Bomber Crew. Space Crew is the brand-new strategic simulation game boldly taking you where no one, Bobby, no one has gone before. Up next, we got Tennis World Tour 2 on the Switch, October 15th. Play as the world's top players, master each surface, or perfect your game, and strive to dominate the world circuit. Choose from multiple game modes with singles and doubles games, local and online. No. Next up, Nine Monkeys of Shaolin, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, October 16th. The true rebirth of iconic beat-em-up genre in the vein of old-school video games. As a simple Chinese fisherman, Wei Chang, you have to avenge the death of your friends and family, slaughtered in a pirate raid at your peaceful village. I'm kind of looking at this one too. I, think I like love beat-em-ups. I love beat-em-ups. I think that, that's a god PCU all over it. Up next, we got Aquanox Deep Descent PC, October 16th. That's Dave. I think he thinks he's taking us to Trestles. I think so. We probably I kind of prematurely to... messaged him. But uh, okay. okay. Well, let's, let's, get, let's, let's get Dave to take us there. Yeah, might as well at this point. He's yeah. already waiting. Yeah. Uh, okay, we, so Aquanox Deep Descent, we left the surface of the earth in ruins, abandoned it, and populated the oceans. The sea is now our new home. We call it Aqua. <laughs> Pilot customized spider ships and explore a deep sea dystopia torn by the struggle for resources and survival. Don't get any better than that. Crown Trick, PC and Switch, October 16th. Enter a labyrinth that moves you that moves as you move, where mastering the elements is key to defeating enemies and uncovering the mysteries of this underground world with a new experience awaiting every time, every time you enter the dungeon. 
this was tied for my mummy mummy between the airplane simulator and the fishing north atlantic on the pc october wow. 16th commercial fishing in the north atlantic you just don't get games like this on console discover the majestic world of canadian nova scotia while admiring the vast diversity of ocean life search for the ocean's gold with upgradable fishing boats and various types of fishing gear as you progress in your career now i know we have multitudes of listeners across every single continent in this on this fine blue marble that we call home but if anyone's listening that's involved in bringing the much delayed gold rush simulator game based on the discovery channel or real life gold rush of the yukon to playstation 4 hurry up and bring it please we're on playstation 5 it's still not out it's meant to be out in quarter one of this year what's happening unacceptable i will give you i will even give you $49.99 Forty nine ninety nine for that game, even if it's complete turd. All right, that's how bad I want it. All right. Wow, that's crazy. What's up? What's the last thing out of the boot before we grab our VHSs off the? This is definitely a game that I'm sure our boy, and when I mean our boy, I mean our little boy, Game yeah. Boy Matty wants to play. Oh, Game Boy Matty and James, the work experience boy. Yeah, Zoot Max Media have got him working on a contractual basis now. So. You got Mario Kart Live Home Circuit for the Switch, October 16th. Yes. yes. See your living room, bedroom, kitchen, and more from the entirely new perspective as Mario Kart racers come to life in your home and on your screen. That, I feel, is going to sell oh, big numbers. Bro, this is going to be huge, bro. Especially if it actually works like the commercial. Yeah. This will be amazing. My only thing with that is they've been quite canny because everything's done on a wood floor. Most people have wood in their home. Yeah, a lot of people do. Some people have carpet. Yeah, that's true. So I don't, I don't know. I'm not really see. a fan of carpet. I have it in places on my I side like, of the wing. I have like maybe a little rug here and there. Hmm. I just love the way a clean floor on your feet feels. I guess that's just me. Whatever, each to their own. Yeah, whatever. Like I guess I'll... if you live in a cold spot, carpet's nice. It mm. does keep it a little bit warmer. Like you're not going to live in Alaska and don't have carpet. I would, I would assume you have carpet there. No, I think you'd have wood because you bring in like snow in all the time. So you don't want to stain the carpet, get it messy. You want to be able to just mop. That's true. It makes sense. Anyway, let's not uh, keep them hanging on because we'll end up forgetting. We'll end up down a tangent of shag pile and we won't know where to come back from, Bobby. <laughs> What's your VHS pick this week? The Lost Boys. Oh, that's a great pick. Yeah, bro. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Even Stingray's nodding his approval. Yeah, he's, he's, awesome. he's, he's sucking hard on a red Marlboro. You know, that stupid song just has, has always stuck in my head. That Which cry, one? little sister. Oh, for me, that's... Just, can I just don't... The song, no matter how many times I hear it, it makes no sense. But yeah. it just hits a, hits a chord, bro. Oh, it makes it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand. It's unbelievable. And who's the actress? I forgot the actress's name. She did a comedy, uh, like 2010, on I think on ABC. Oh, I'm not sure. She, her name, I think her name is Jamie something. But man, she was a hottie in that movie. It's a good era, mate. It was really good. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna slap the con. I'm gonna I, you've raised the bar, and I'm gonna <laughs> slap it back down again because my I pulled out. The Mask of Zorro, the Ooh. Antonio Banderas, Anthony Hopkins, yeah. Catherine Zeta-Jones, Zorro movie. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that one. Are you like- <laughs> I like that. I like Antonio Banderas, bro. I got a soft spot for him. Okay, right. Well, that was my uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones. I've got a soft spot for Catherine. If I had to watch Zorro or Desperado, I'm going to pick Desperado. Selma Hayek is for me. Oh, yeah. I think the Desperado's... The epitome of beauty. Yeah. And I think Desperado's a much better film. But either of those... Well, one of them's Welsh. The one's actually got some sort of Spanish origins, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway... Dada Jones is Welsh? Catherine Zeta-Jones is from Wales, mate, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, I never knew that. She was on a couple of shows over here. She got a big break on a program called um, The Darling Buds of May, which was with a guy called David Jason. 
and it was oh, a, so a family cool. staple on a Sunday evening. You'd sit down. It was a, uh, quite a good show based around a family in 1950s England. Sort of, they were a bit sort of, the dad was a bit of a t- uh, scallywag. You know, he worked cash in hand and didn't pay his taxes and he had a massive family and Catherine Zeta-Jones was his eldest child, which was also his daughter. And in the first episode, a tax collector comes along who's like coming from the Inland Revenue to all the IRS, as, as we would call it here in the States, to investigate him. And he ends up falling in love with his, uh, with their daughter, Catherine oh. D. Jones. And therefore he, he sort of, they play him like a fiddle, you see. So yeah, he obviously yeah, can't yeah. report. And then, it, you know, the, the show develops from there and a few more series later. It's based on a series of books. I can't remember the name of the author, though. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's irrelevant, really, but yeah. So, hmm, interesting. The Welsh accent is interesting. So Christian Bale is from Wales. Yeah, well, when I, I noticed in Zorro, she was doing her best to do a Spanish accent, but then she kind of like half broke into Welsh in one section. And, and I guess if you didn't know, you wouldn't know, but I knew and I was like, oh dear. That's not so great, funny. love. Yeah, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Well, I'm going to go there one day. Wales? Mm-hmm. The land of the Druids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm not really sure what's there, but I would go take a pick a gander over there. It's uh, the Pembrokeshire coasts, are absolutely unrivaled. Very beautiful place. Very beautiful place. Awesome. Lots of history and myth and. Not gonna lie, when I went to England, I cried. I was so happy I was in London, seeing all that history. I cried. I went to Ireland, which I have no family ties to, as far as I know. I'm so American; it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I feel like when I went back to Galway, because my family's castle's over there, you know, from ancient history, I yeah. cried. I cried, bro. I saw the cliffs of Moher, cried. Wow. I'm a cry when I go to on vacation, man. Well, let let's 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 not make let's not make let's not have any tears now. <laughs> let's get the show done. Let's get ourselves some steak from Trestles. Dave's yeah, revving at the door. He's ready to Everyone go. that's paid attention from the top of the show knows I'm going to ask you hang on a minute Odders just pull the speed back a little bit friend you're nearly home you're on the home stretch now Bobby what are you hoping to play? I have a mic sound like a repeat but I'm going to finish Train Brigade mm-hmm. I'm going to play some more I guess Rogue Company you know whatever but we're going to definitely start the Zombie Army Trilogy okay <laughs> it's gonna happen bro. Well, i'm gonna sound like a repeat as well but <laughs> at some point in time i want to try and get gta 4 finish mm-hmm. i just want to see it done yeah, and, I'll, no. and i'll have a little nibble at the dlc as well and get that done over time but i think i'm gonna i'm gonna turn the ps4 on it's not gonna know what's hit it really and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna give witcher 3 a go because i think it, oh, i think it beautiful. deserves it um i'm uh, so happy for you well so, you know i might not like it i hope i really hope you like it Okay, well, we'll see. I don't know if I've got 150 hours before PlayStation 5 launches and Sony are being very generous. I think we're being sent every launch game. Every launch game. Beautiful. We're getting Valhalla. We're getting Sackboy. We're getting Demon Souls. We're you know getting... what was cool? What's cool? When I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey mm-hmm. and I kind of went to Eva's little town, I'm sure it'd be pretty cool to go to your little town. In Valhalla, Lincoln, That'd be awesome, right? is, that Lincoln be cool? is in it. She? It's That's in so it. cool, man. And, it, and I was reading um, some information about that. That was the first city they did. And apparently the developers, for some reason, have got a soft spot for it, sort of implemented loads of things to get going on around Lincoln. That's so awesome. Which I'm very excited. You know what I'm I guess like of. playing like, like Spider-Man for me or Ghostbusters and seeing New York City, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, it's been so done, but it's still kind of cool. Yeah. But then to see your city in a game that's got it that's that's an awesome feeling bro albeit one that we barely recognize but, but still you know, it's still i'm awesome. still very excited that it's in yeah there. man and they're cool. normally got a, a decent eye for attention to detail i've seen mm-hmm. one screenshot of lincoln and it's the what looks like a reused roman gate which was mm-hmm. obviously still around uh only the footings of that can be seen now but that they look like that's they've nailed that cool, pretty man. well they look very cool so that what else are we getting uh cyberpunk mm-hmm which mm-hmm. is obviously an upgraded game. Yakuza, which I'm excited for. So, yeah, big hookup. What yeah, can we say? Down. 
Calm we just we've earned it. Yeah, man. With that, Bobby, all said and done, I believe it's time to wish them adieu. That's it. And we'll have some of that adieu sauce, whatever it's called. We'll figure it out next episode. Let's we'll call it a adieu sauce. Let's do it. Is there any sides that you'd recommend from Trestles? Yeah, the jalapeno poppers. They have. Oh, what are they? Cheese. You never had, you never had a jalapeno popper? No, I've never been Trestles, friend. I, I'm new, new. I'm a I new mean, New Yorker. I know, but I thought maybe you. Okay, so basically, it's a jalapeno popper. Well, it's a jalapeno, yeah. right? Yeah. It could be either whole or cut in half. Yeah. They deep fry. Well, they they wrap it with cheese, and then they bread it, and they deep fry it, and they pull those bad boys out with an amazing creamy sauce. Yeah, it's amazing. They got they got Parmesan truffle fries, which is amazing. Oh, okay. They have little right. mini spare ribs. Ooh, going down. When I get in the back of Dave's taxi, I'm going to press X to skip the journey so we can just get there instantaneously. <laughs> That'll be hilarious, bro. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's all we have time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do that counts. See you, Bobby. Peace out, George. 